welcome to the Tutors of Life podcast, episode 76. This is your host, Sean Tudor. And this is Sam. Sam and I just got back from a mastermind retreat in Arizona like two hours ago. Uh, yep. You bet. Yep. How was it? It was good. What do you think? I thought it was very good. Yeah. I was quite impressed with it. Yeah. It was just a lot of information at once. So it was tiring. Yeah, it wasn't for me. I just digested. I was just digesting. It wasn't for you? It wasn't tiring. Oh. I just loved it. Just took it all in. Yeah, no, I could I couldn't do that. Keep in mind I consume knowledge all, all day, day long. long. Like all day. I listen to podcasts all day long. I'm aware. Yeah, by the end of the first day, I mean, we really mainly had two days, two and a half days. The second, or Friday, we had speakers from 9 a.m. until, I think it was four. Mm-hmm. And after that, I was just so exhausted from thinking of new things that I just curled up in a ball and just laid there for half an hour just to, like, try and relax. I went for a motorcycle, or no, I went for a slingshot ride and talked more business with Dan. You would talk, you just constantly talk business. Literally, literally. That's I, all you do. I have to admit, so I didn't want to go because we just got back from Vegas trip two weeks ago from the wedding. Yeah. So I was like, man, I really want to do this mastermind thing, but I really don't want to go right now. But we went because we had, wanted, like. Wanted to. Like, had to. You were a speaker. I already signed up. Yeah. And we already paid for it. Yeah, and we're part of the group, so I'd have felt real bad if we didn't. Yeah, that's true. And I am part of the board, so I probably should. We had to go. Yeah. So anyhow, I was like, man, didn't really want to go because we just got back from six-day vacation, but I was very happy we went. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing is... It's not the, I'm, I was super excited for the content and like the activities we do. I wasn't excited for the fact that I'd only been home for like 12 days before I was leaving for another four days without my hammo. Yeah. yeah. If, if it would have been a trip where we were going, the three of us together, oh, yeah, it would have been a lot different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just felt bad leaving these puppers because we only been home for two weeks. Yeah. She's been cuddling us hard. I do. But anyhow, so... Um, a lot of fun. Masterminds kind of are, um... It's not for the weak. It's where my mind's at ease. Is it? Just learning? Just learning, Passing. talking business, thinking of things, thinking of things to help people, thinking of things to help myself. Mm-hmm. People just, just destroying you. Fun. It's honestly just fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I kind of wonder what my like best role would be in owning a company what do you think it'd be the implementer the implementer yeah okay what do you think yours or what do you think it is i think it's the implementer how does how does one implement you're asking the wrong person um creating systems and presenting them to people, showing people and then holding them to a standard. So I think I I think the implementer position is the position well, maybe. I like the idea of like learning, coming up with ideas to then bring and implement. But I don't want to be the one implementing the fine details. Like So what you're describing is you want to be a coach. Well, yeah, I mean part like part of it would be coaching, but it's really like I want to bring it to a team. Say team, this is what we got. We need to do this, 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 this. And then I delegate that, 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 because I don't want to have to do it all. Right. But so that kind of sounds like what like the traction guy does. 
Right. Like he looks at a business and says, well, I mean, he does it only in one system. I mean, you would, it would probably help if you figured or like learned multiple different systems on how to do things. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just tell them like, if you want to get better, like this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And then you can delegate the team that you're helping their proper tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely do that just coaching, too, I think. Yeah, you can. Mm. You can. Get some one-on-one clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there was a lot of good information this weekend. There was. So much. Yeah. Way more than I was expecting. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, I think I'll be more excited to do more of these things once, like, like I have tutors of life, right? Okay. But it's not like really a business, right? We're not making money. Right. So I think, I, yes, I can like start applying those things now mm-hmm. to make this better. Mm-hmm. But I think once we're like making money or I'll, I'll just be more excited in the future. Like to go learn those things. Mm-hmm. But you have to keep in mind what ryan and my whole talk was based upon building wealth right and how would we do how to how did we do it how is it possible by working at your business even when you don't make money right so the first four years we really didn't make money I mean, you two personally didn't. Your business did. Yeah, but in order for the business to be anything, we had to keep pouring it all back in. Well, yeah. So if you look at Tours of Life and go, well, it doesn't make any money. Well, yeah, but what if you pour everything into that for four years? But what am I, like, I don't know. It's just so hard because you and I have talked. Like, right now we're focusing on the home improvement and Mm -hmm. holding. So then we can start pouring more money into this. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we can talk about that mm-hmm. a different day. But would it be? What do we? What do we need to pour money into it for? We just need to pour res like time. Which I have been doing, but like some of those things, like we can't do without money. Like what? Like getting a. VA or someone to edit the videos so then I can do other stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, you couldn't just have a a different business pay for it. Like, dual dual use it. Dual use the VA. I mean, we could, yeah. Right. But we'd want to make sure that the home improvement company is cared for first. I'm just going to be more excited, like, once... We get home improvement and holding where it needs to be for, like, both of us to focus on this. Hmm. I think it's going to be a long time before I could, like, I I don't think I'll be able to solely focus on this. I'm not saying solely. Okay. How much time do you want me to focus on it? We can, uh, we'll hash that out later. Well, how much time are you thinking? I don't know. Oh, okay. Now he's just like, but why would you even bring it up if you don't know? See, this is like this right here. This this is like what happens at the mastermind. Literally this weekend, we were saying how we don't bring up stuff to each other until we're on the podcast. Mm-hmm. This is one of those things. Mm-hmm. Well, it's kind of how the mastermind goes, though. Right? Well, we have to think through things that right. we're learning. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, in order for you to think through why you're not excited about it. You have to ask me all these questions? Yeah, I mean, how else are you going to figure it out? I don't know. To get excited. I mean, I... Wait, how else are we going to figure out for me to get excited? Yeah, for you to be excited to, like, do more. And, like, I'm not saying I'm not excited to do this, but I think, like, it'll be easier to apply all those things once this is, like, up and running more. So, what's what's holding us up from making it run more? For me doing more? For like the the tutors of life up and running more. Time. Time. 
How can we get more time? Obviously, quitting my full-time job. Um, that is an option. I don't know if it's the right option. Correct. What else could we do? But this is not the point of this podcast today, Sean. We're talking about what we learned, and we're not applying it to this fucking thing. Why not? Because... Then people can understand what it's like. No. Why? We're trying to talk about what we learned. This is what we learned. No, it's not, actually. Oh. Interesting. Why not? Stop. I am going to leave this podcast today. <laughs> Babe. This is fun. No. Why isn't this fun? You love just fucking grilling me and like, uh, I, I'm, I, I am, I want to walk away from you. Really? I can't handle this right now. Why? Because you're frustrating me. Interesting. Okay. Well, what do you want to talk about? What we learned that doesn't apply to what I just talked about. All right. Well, what else? What did we learn? What else did we learn? What did you learn, John? What did I learn? Well, I asked you first. No, you did. And I... I just asked you, babe. No, you. All right. What did I learn? <laughs> um, I learned a lot this weekend. Um, so we started out talking about habits. So Thursday night we talked about habits. And um, it led into the one thing by, what's that guy's name? Gary Keller? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. Um, it's like, what's the one thing you could do now that would make everything else easier Mm -hmm. um or like run smoother or whatever um so you're just talking about habits and like why we don't actually follow our habits all the time and stuff like that or why our habits aren't good how to break bad habits how to create new good habits yeah i because i'm reading the one book that we talked about uh why can't i think of what it's called atomic habits thank you um and i wish i would have brought my notebook up here because there was one line that i just read from that book that i was like fuck that is good it was gold i wrote it down Mm -hmm. i just don't have my notebook on me Mm -hmm. we can do another we should do another podcast on habits to be honest you think so i don't think we've done one in a while Mm. has been a little bit yeah there's habits that um are good to do yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some habits that are bad. Mm. So, yeah, we talked about habits. That was really good. I was good. What was your one big takeaway about habits? Like, what is one thing that you're planning on doing? Keep talking. I wrote it down. Because I think my, like, and I just tried doing this while we were downstairs. My one thing that I want to start doing more is being more intentional with my, like, movements and actions. So, oh, I remember what the quote quote was. Um, It's knowing the difference between motion and action. Sean, I'm going to interrupt you while you're looking at your notes. Do you know what the difference is between motion and action? Motion is moving. Mm -hmm. Action is doing. Mm -hmm. So how would you apply that to business? Motion is staying busy and just doing shit or like, you know, and then action would be completing the tasks that are important, taking action on those tasks. Yes. So. Am I right? Kind of. That was fucking genius. Um, so what we did this weekend was motion, right? We were Mm. thinking about it, planning it out Mm -hmm. and you can do little things to like work towards it, but it's not. It's just, it just, you're just constantly moving. Action is getting an end result. Okay. So, right, like this weekend, like we all did the motion, right, of we went to the mastermind, we learned stuff to improve our businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll see if everyone takes action probably in the next six months Mm -hmm. by if any of them applied or like have done any of those things we talked about this weekend right right cool eh? so we will see if everybody we'll see who took action is what you're getting at yeah after this weekend of yep. motion but so that brings me um to my point of i'm trying to be more intentional with my movements mm-hmm. 
so when we were downstairs, we had a whole bunch of stuff on our countertop, which we always do. Mm-hmm. And Sean and I have been thinking about how we waste a lot of time just cleaning our house, which it's not actually a lot of time, but it's time that we could be, we could stop cleaning our house by having someone else do it and we could be working on this podcast. Mm-hmm. That would that would free up some time for you. Exactly. So um, where you wouldn't have to quit your job. Correct. But so when we were downstairs, I gathered all the paper and everything that we had down there and brought it upstairs instead of just keeping it sit there until I get annoyed by everything that's on the counter because Sean never brings anything upstairs. I am so excited for Kaylee. Oh, I am too. I am going to have Kaylee help me run my life. Yep. So what's your one thing, Sean? Well, my one thing, and this might go in a couple different ways. I have to do a little more motion in figuring out exactly what this means. Okay. My one thing is lead generation. Ah, yes, we did talk about this. A lot. Yeah. Um, so, do you want me to go in depth? Yeah. If I go in depth on that, you realize I'm going to cover like the whole mastermind in a go. Just apply what that means for habits. What the lead generation for habits means is right now I do lead generation once a week for like a couple hours and it'll be at a random time. Mm-hmm. My one thing I would like to do um, is get up and do lead generate like i i want to time block out either my morning or certain days of the week certain times of the week whatever where i solely focus on lead generation okay so maybe it's two hours every monday wednesday friday in the morning that i focus on lead generation so like one of your habits would be uh like writing it in your calendar so you have to do it right um and Kaylee's going to help with that, too, because she'll be doing um, our mailers then. Mm-hmm. Yep. And she's also, so what's also nice is I'm going to have her take over a lot of the office admin stuff it's that I'll, sp- like, I spend, I probably spend, like, three to four hours a week on, like, office admin stuff. Mm-hmm. So not a whole lot, right? But if Kaylee does that for me, that's three to four more hours I can do on lead gen. Yeah. Um, which will benefit her because she'll learn a lot of good admin stuff, and it'll benefit me because I'll get to focus more on lead gen. And what's catch up on lead gen? You know what you could do with that? Some of that three to four hours. Work on tours of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Then I don't have to quit my job. Um. Also, guess who didn't write a blog on Thursday? Did me. That's because I'm a piece of shit. Yep. So then that was Thursday night. Our first speaker. Friday morning. I just wanted to say, good job, Catherine. Keep going. Friday morning, we had Justin Nelson, who is uh, the founder of Sphere Rocket, which they help businesses find virtual assistants um, to help them with their businesses. So Sean and I are considering getting one down the road, depending on where things take us the next couple of months, probably. Uh, but his, so his talk was about not building wealth. Um, Sean. Hey, I'm listening to you. What's up? What was Justin's main talk? Or what was his topic? Leverage. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. Um, so yeah, leveraging your time, money to benefit you and your business. So like the biggest thing I think for everyone there was that like he doesn't do a lot of stuff like personal stuff he doesn't do a lot of daily living skills yeah he has someone clean his house he has someone do his laundry he has someone meal prep for him uh he did say he does go grocery shopping himself because he needed something to do to feel like he has a purpose yeah but he has paid someone to do that too before he has yep 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 so that's like one way to leverage your time it's like once again, Sean and I were saying, we spend probably two, three hours a week cleaning our house. More than that. Four hours a week cleaning our house. And 
that could be time that we put towards tutors of life or the home improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like one, one way to like leverage your time. Uh, yeah. So yeah, what he did with us was the, like the big, I guess the, one of the big topics we had was what are some of the things you would want in life, okay. whether it be materialistic, unmateristic, whatever, right? And so mine was a certain car because yin yang. But then someone brought up someone do their laundry. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, oh, yeah, laundry and cleaning and meal prep would be really awesome for we, someone to do. Which we've talked about probably for the past year. Oh, yeah. Especially like our meal prepping. Our meal prepping is about four hours a week. Yes, our meal prepping is like four hours a week. And if we weren't going to have cheat, like more cheat meals and stuff, mm. then we would need to make it like six hours a week. Oh, yeah. So right now we're only doing four and then Wait, we have some cheat meals. Who has cheat meals? Well, me, because daddy got to eat. Anyways. Oh, yeah? Like you don't have cheat meals? Not as much as you. Do you have cheat meals though? If we have a cheat meal for dinner because we didn't have anything prepped, then yes. There we go. Okay. How much quick trip and other things do you get during the work day First that off, I eat our meals? First off, you know I still eat my meal. Second off, I banned quick trip. You also have known for like two months that you need another meal, but yet you haven't prepped yourself another meal. Because that would take away from my... Cheat meals. Cheat meals. Uh, Sam. So, you know, um, but he also, the one thing I thought was really cool, which I don't think anyone thought of was leveraging those materialistic things. So yes, he has a couple of like nice sports cars, nice sports cars. And he leverages them by allowing people to use them for like photo shoots. Yep. So he makes more than the car, like his car payment by literally having it he has a toad Mm -hmm. to wherever they're doing this photo shoot Mm -hmm. they plop it down do the photo shoot put it back on the tow truck and bring it back to his house Mm -hmm. so no miles are being put on this car Mm -hmm. you don't have to do any maintenance Mm -hmm. and he is making money off of it Mm -hmm. and he gets cool cars and he gets cool cars yeah that is very sweet because yeah what like oh okay so my lambo's at a photo shoot today Okay, well, I guess I'll drive my Corvette. Yeah. Rough life, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, or vice versa, like off. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll drive the Lambo today. Corvette's at a photo shoot. Mm-hmm. And right. the other cool thing was him and a couple of his friends wanted to get, uh, like, a cabin, I think, in some state. Yes, they wanted a cabin on the water. Yep. Mm-hmm. So they didn't Airbnb it. Mm-mm. But they rented it to, like, their friends and family. Mm -hmm. So him and four friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they were able to make more money than it costs each of them by just renting it to their friends and family. Yep. And now they have, with the money he made from renting that, he bought his own personal lake house. Yeah. I was like, fuck, dude, that's smart. Like, That's very smart. You wanted this, so you just got something else that paid for you to have that. Yep. So, and that's what, like, Lindsay was saying. Like, they get mansions for their ma- masterminds. Mm-hmm. You have to think, if you're renting it to, like, I would say, like, a prestigious group or, like, people that you know or, mm-hmm. like, you know someone in the group, like, they're going to usually take better care of it, mm-hmm. especially if it's a mansion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But you need to have more K cups in those things. Well, okay, ours was not the best quality. Though. Our Airbnb, we ran out of K cups, and I was like, "Well, what do I do now?" I think we almost ran out of toilet paper too. Even dude, we got close. We got very close. No fucking five propane tanks. No propane. Yep. There dude, was... how do you have five propane tanks and no propane? I I don't even think there was enough towels in that place for everyone that stayed there. Yeah, and we didn't even fill every bed. Dude, I was. I was actually pretty impressed with how low of qual- like how low quality those hosts were. Oh, and let's not forget the bathroom leak. The bathroom, dude, they had a bathroom leak the whole damn time dripping down from the ceiling on- into the kitchen. Onto the kitchen, like, counter. Oh, onto the kitchen counter. 
but have a plumber come in and cap that bitch. What do you mean? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So I was pretty not impressed with the host there. Yeah. Hopefully Eva leaves a bad review for them. Yeah, seriously. But so Justin really taught us like how to leverage things and how to be creative with our leveraging. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which that really applies to like Sean and I because Sean wants a lot of cool either classic or sports cars. So now, and we know quite a few photographers in the area. Yeah. We can see if they want to Yeah, take pictures with my cars. Mm -hmm. I got to get more cars then. Yeah. Otherwise too, I mean, we have a car hauler or a trailer that could haul cars. Do we? Bro, I sold it. Wait, what? My car hauler. I sold it. You know I sold my car hauler. Didn't you get another one? Another flatbed? Oh, no, you tried to, but the guy wouldn't. Oh, uh -huh. that's right. Uh -huh. It didn't come to fruition. That's right. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Sean could get a car hauler, and then we could always drive to the cities if we needed to. Oh, yeah. Well, remember we had the Bachelorette reach out to yeah. us. The Bachelor. What was that one? Yeah, it was for the Bachelorette. Yeah, the Bachelorette called, and they wanted a red Corvette for a photo shoot. And I was like, yeah, that'd be fine. And then um, uh, they, the shoot for that weekend got canceled, so they didn't need the car. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. And the guy was like, hey, if we ever have any shoots up in that area, can we contact you back for your car? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they were just going to come pick it up. Well, so no, they were going to either, there's two options. They would pay for me to have it delivered there, mm -hmm. or I could deliver it myself, and they'd pay me the delivery fee, plus they'd pay me, um, do you remember, I was like 250 or $500 for the day? It was something like that. Yeah, it was something like that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they needed it for the weekend. I think it was like two days. Yeah. So then I get paid for to deliver it. It was there for like $250 a day or whatever. And then I might have to go pick it back up. And then I would also get pictures with, like, the cast. Yeah, I think, I think you're the something. Bachelorette, yeah. With the Bachelor, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, that's really cool. Um, so, yeah, it, it would be an option. It would be an option. Yeah. Especially since we're so close to the cities. Mm -hmm. So that's what we learned from Justin. Yeah, yeah. That would be kind of fun, actually. Yeah. Hmm. And after Justin, we had Klein. Oh, let's um, let's stay on Justin for a minute. Oh. Um, what else did we learn there? I don't know. I also, why don't you just have your notes in your lap? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So uh, it was um, he reinforced uh, the one thing again. So after we talked, to, had the habit one thing with oh, yeah. Catherine, mm. he was like, what is your one thing? And then we all had to message him our one thing, and he's going to check in to see if we're doing that one thing. Yeah. What was so our one thing? Mine was lead generation. What was yours? I thought, did we message separately? Because you said Sean and Sam. Yeah, I said mine was lead gen, and you had one for two years of life. You already forgot your one thing. Yep, 100%. There was so much going on this weekend. Wow, babe. Wow. Here, wow. I'll, I'll look it up for you if you want. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. Well, you made it sound like it was a big deal. I don't know if I remember. Do you remember? What my one thing was? Yeah. I just said no. Mm, weird. Um. So, yeah, he had, he had a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. It was really leverage your time so you're not doing so that you can put your time towards the most efficient thing no we, li you, we, we literally, literally just said just, that yeah damn it well what's your one thing you got to send him something now you said sam and i yeah like sean and sam but you're gonna have you're gonna have to get one out too babe. hey i'm part owner of two home improvement two told company one of the two and also what's yours is mine mm-hmm What's my one thing? Uh, probably just learning more stuff to improve Tutors of Life's presence. Okay. So I'm either thinking of doing like a marketing class online, mm -hmm. um, looking into SEOs, mm -hmm. just improving and learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 
think if you binge watched Gary V. Yeah. It would probably get you there a lot faster than like a marketing course. Yeah. My only issue is I struggle listening to podcasts and stuff at work. Yeah. Because I can't like write notes down. Okay, so you would need to find time at home to watch videos and do it. Uh-huh. Mm. Which could be part of my intentional mm-hmm. habit that I want to start or mm-hmm. keep doing. So instead of, or like if I grab my phone, I'm grabbing my phone to watch Gary V or listen to Gary mm-hmm. V. Mm-hmm. Not going on TikTok, TikTok. and Instagram. Right. Yep. That's a good idea. So, yeah, I liked a lot of stuff Justin had to say. Mm-hmm. I, I liked his uh, leverage talk. Yeah. Made lots of lots of sensei. It did. Okay, and then we had Klein next. Mm-hmm. Which hers was the story behind the brand. The story brand. Branding a story. How to make a story brand. Something like that. Yep. So that's just, that's based off of a book named that. Yeah. Oh. I have it. Here, let me grab my... I'm going to put my notes in my lap. Okay, go ahead, babe. Well, I thought you had the name of the book. He doesn't know where it is. Building a story brand. There we go. Um, I also want to look and see if there's... Right, like, there's got to be other ways. For what? So, like, building a story brand. Right, like, so this... Her way was based off of the one book. Mm-hmm. But, like, as we've talked about, like, we have the 12-week year or the four-hour work week. Like, there's different ways to, like, leverage your time to get more done in less time. Mm -hmm. So, I'm curious, like, what other ways, like, behind the brand is there? I'm sure a thousand. Correct. I'm just, like, curious, like, what... So, like... I don't know. I just like to learn, like, other ways. Mm Mm-hmm. But, anyway, so hers... Was actually very, I think, very good for like pretty much everyone there because not very many people have websites for their businesses that were there. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a very simple, like step by step process of how to build your website and Mm -hmm. make it effective. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was definitely very beneficial to a lot of people. 100%. Mm -hmm. How could we get a website made like that? For what? What should we make it for? That's what I'm asking you. That's what I was asking you. Buy to home improvement. Oh, we can do it on Canva. Oh, okay. Yeah, we would do it on Canva instead of WordPress. Would we do it or would we leverage it? We could see what Kaylee could come up with. Mm. Ooh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. That'd be fun. You need to start taking pictures. Of what? And videos. Of what? Sean hates, Sean forgets to take pictures and videos, even though we have talked about it for probably the past two months. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pictures that I have, like before pictures of places, and then Sean never takes afters. I am very, very, very bad at being intentional with taking pictures and videos. So maybe that's like one thing we'll have Kaylee put in your calendar, is like... When she knows when you're starting a project to put in your calendar that says take pictures of X house. And then when she knows you're getting close to ending, take pictures of X house. Put into Google in the folder of X house name. Yeah. Probably a pretty good idea. Yeah. she's. I think she's going to be more your assistant for a little while. She's going to help me figure out life. Yes, she will. And she's. Gangster. I was going to say almost half your age, but almost half my age. That's. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Actually, she is half my age. She's half your age. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. Old as dirt. Thank you. I'm uh, well aware. Literally dirt. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the I, I did make some adjustments to Tutors of Life, the website, but I was telling Sean, like, I want to look at what other websites that mainly are just like creative content, mm-hmm. um, what they kind of do for their websites too. But so I did add some things to like make our website more clear mm-hmm. because it's very, 
I don't know. It's just not very descriptive. We need... So, yeah, what the big thing we learned in that mm-hmm. is for... So, for tutor to, for toe improvement, we need, like, a page on what the hell we even do. Correct. And then... Especially if you want to start appealing to other people instead of just yourself. Right. And then for tutors of life, we have too broad of a scope and so we need to reel in the scope we can still talk about the broad topics but we need to i think we just need to be more specific on how we label things Mm -hmm. so like we can say like we specialize in business and real estate Mm -hmm. but because i just don't want to change like our whole idea behind why we started this right so yeah we're going to be more specific with a lot of our like podcast titles um the like tags and um descriptions of our blogs there's just a lot of things we're going to be more specific on Mm -hmm. and like when we go to meetings and stuff and say that we do tutors of life we'll say we specialize in talking about businesses and real estate and fun things in life or something Mm -hmm. yep hundred percent so yeah cool that was fun yeah that was fun um what else who was next I think it was Ryan and I. It was. It was Ryan and I. Uh huh. Um, we talked about wealth building. Yeah. Uh, what What was your key takeaway there, babe? My key takeaway from you and Ryan. It's kind of hard when I helped you. Um, we made a PowerPoint. But then we had technical difficulties, so Ryan and I had to read the PowerPoint off our phones. Yeah. <sighs> Did you learn Did that? Did not you- get all the content out that we wanted to. No. Did you learn that you should probably work on stuff before the day before? No. Why would I do that? Cool. Uh, I did like the... I was utilizing time, honey. Yeah. I was leveraging my time. I did like what I found um, from uh, Robert... Kiyosaki, mm-hmm. about the difference between money and wealth, mm-hmm. which I don't remember if we talked about it on here or if we talked about it. I know I heard it somewhere, mm. but money is just used as like a, a form of trade. Mm-hmm. So you're trading your time. Like if you have a job, you're trading your time to get money mm-hmm. and then you take that money and trade it to get goods. Mm hmm. But someone that has lots of money mm-hmm. doesn't have lots of wealth, tech, or potentially could not have lots of wealth. Correct. Yep. Just just because you have money does not mean you have wealth. Okay, mm-hmm. keep going. So the one like main definition of wealth is how long you can survive without active income. Mm-hmm. Jake got it. Jake was spot on. Yeah, he was. Dude. It took him a couple tries, but he got it spot on. Yep. I love that. So, so awesome. So that really changes your mindset of what wealth is because a lot of people think wealthy people are just rich and have lots of fancy things Mm -mm. but someone could have lots of fancy things but have zero wealth that's like the millionaire next door yeah we should change it back to there to see how it's going oh yeah that would have been funny if my mic cut out this whole time nope i'm just pretty quiet that's okay keep going so it's very interesting. It just, like, a lot of business owners, they need to change their mindset on money. And, like, Caroline learned last year, her business wasn't sellable because her business was only her. Mm-hmm. So she's been slowly working at getting her business to be in a sellable way, which if you create your business to be sellable, then it will potentially get you passive income potentially get you passive income and it'll also become an asset which will help towards your wealth yes Mm -hmm. Um, because you want you want your business if you're growing a business you want your business to be in a way where they don't necessarily need you to function correct so i don't know that's like one of my like favorite things and then it always reminds me that I really need to start writing directions for how I do things. So in case I die, Sean can do this podcast still. Mm-hmm. That was my main goal this past weekend, but my brain was so dead I didn't. That's all right. I didn't We got time. 
That's not number one. No. That's like number 100th. Is it number 100th? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of other stuff we can focus on. Mm -hmm. So what, do you think that's good on what I learned from you and Ryan? It's good. Cool. Um, and also, you're not going to create wealth if you don't have money. Yeah. If you don't make money, you ain't creating shit because you're broke as fuck. Yeah. So there's that too. Yeah. Yeah. Or I should say, if you don't profit, whether it's profit in personal life or profit in business life, you ain't going to have shit. Yeah. And you need that profit to invest back into your company for a, a, while, a little while. To create more profit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that was the issue with, like, Sean and Ryan. Well, you shouldn't say it was an issue. It was not the issue. Uh, that was what happened with Sean and Ryan is for the first three years, actually, I four think the years. first four years, Yeah. They, weren't, they were taking all their profits and putting it back in the business. Yeah. So they were getting their salaries, but that was it. That's it. And our salaries were not big. No, the first two years, they... VB small. Be small. Um, Sean and I survived on very, very little income for the whole year. And made it to Asia. We've talked about that, though. That was the first year. Then the second year was really small. Third year was bigger, but we poured... The salary was bigger, but we poured, like, over half the salary back into the company. Yeah. And then the fourth year, small salary, poured most of it back in. Then the start of the fifth year is when we invested everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. Yeah. Then lastly, we had Lindsay. Mm Mm-hmm. I cannot remember Lindsay's last name. I'm not even going to act like I know. Nice. And she talked about how and when to scale your business, which was very good for a lot of the people there. Lindsay wrote Powerhouse Woman. Yes. Uh, so she really i guess really showed us because her and now like justin really piggybacked off of each other i would Mm -hmm. say which is so it's so good when like all of the topics just like come together really mesh Mm -hmm. i think like she was just like a good end point like i think a lot of what she said really literally like put it all together i think so because we talked about all the leveraging Mm -hmm. and then she was like how do you she didn't really talk about well she talked about leverage but not as big of a portion so it was good to have heard the big portion of leverage before Mm -hmm. so when she brought it up briefly she was like yeah so what do you want in one year five years 20 years okay how can you start your one year how can you make what you want in one year it to be done in the next three months, three to six months. Yeah. And then how do you get what you want in 20 years? How do you get that in 10? Oh, fuck, I thought she said, Five like, how do, you, how do you start it in, like, three, I thought she um, said. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it was like, what do you want in 20 years? How do you start that rolling in, like, three? three. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck, that's a good question. Yeah, so she and she brought talked about that. She really talked about, um, like, habits, too, even. Mm-hmm. How, like, doing those little things. Uh, can really get you to your end goal so much faster. And she talked about how you kind of, you had to have wealth. So we talked about there's four, four ways to increase your profit or increase. I don't have my packet with me. What are you trying to find? The four ways to increase or increase your income and revenue. So you increase prices, you increase the amount of customers so one way is increase prices. Second way is increase customers. Oh, I know the four. I just couldn't remember what the title was. Oh, it's called It's just Four your... Ways to Scale a Business by Increasing Revenue. Because mm-hmm. then the third one is average, or increasing the average price per customer or transaction. A- average amount. price per transaction, yep. And then increase frequency after that. Yep. Look at you. Look at you go. Yeah, I, I just forgot what the title was. Okay. I got the title. Thank you. Yep. So that really explained to us again, like, you need to do this to increase your profits so then you can start building wealth. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And I like, I really like those four easy steps because it makes you think in a more simple manner of how can I increase my revenue? Yep. And then she's like, how does this apply? Which one of these four in the next 90 days would help, would be, would be your biggest opportunity to focus on? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's cool. Mine's customers. I think both of ours are customers. Both of ours are customers. Yep. Then we talked a lot about personal development and what our biggest limiting beliefs are and like limiting factors in doing these things. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she started her talk with saying that in gen- like everyone, everyone's biggest limiting factor is yourself, mm-hmm. which is so true. I have always known that. I'm not a very big risk taker. Tell me more. Sean knows. I like to be uh, comfortable and I don't like change. But I have slowly been working at changing. Mm -hmm. If any of you need a good book to read about changes and really trying to be happy with changes, read Who Moved My Cheese. That book fucks, dude. Yeah. Sean's wrote a blog about it. I mm, love that book. Yeah. We kind of talked about it on the podcast, but not really. And yeah, it just, it really shows you how much you limit yourself if you fear change. Correct. Especially as a business owner. But oh, I think just in life. Both for sure. Mm-hmm. Both for sure. When we went to Hawaii last year, Sean really wanted to go surfing. And I was like, no, like, I'll just watch. That's fine. And I said, no, be your surfing. Correct. And it was the most fun I had. I was so anxious and afraid that whole morning. Like, I was not looking forward to it. I was so terrified. And I had so much fun. Yeah. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually used to be just like that. When did you change? I decided to quit being a pussy. When I was 22 or 23. So while we were dating? Yeah, 100%. It was, it was just because I listened to so many like personal development books and stuff. Yeah. Dang. That was literally like it. Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, like I couldn't tell. No, I just became more confident. I also um, that was definitely became du- looking good as fuck. Yeah, that was definitely during our rough period. Yeah, because I looked good as fuck. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and I gained confidence. Yeah, confidence helps. Because I learned that, oh, I can actually handle change because I started a business. And then I started doing that business and I was like consuming copious amounts of personal development and business information. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Wow. I can actually do whatever I want to do because I'm awesome and I'm confident. And you somehow stuck with me. And that's when I quit being a hem or a ha. You were definitely a ha. I was a ha, yeah. and now I'm not a ha. I'm more of a sniff or scurry. Yeah. What up? And you know what? It was through self-development. Mm-hmm. It was not. I was definitely a ha growing up forever, yeah. big time. Yeah. So the one thing, too, that Lindsay touched on more than... The one thing. I know, that everyone else didn't, was, like, reflecting on yourself. Like, why, why haven't you scaled? Why... Let's see. The question's are right here. Um, so what would make you feel like you succeeded? Okay, and the next page is what can't you bring with you? Huh? And what can you what? Can't you bring with you? Right. What can't you bring with you? What What is holding you back from getting those successes that you want to have in a year? Yep. So she said, like, you are, you are your only limiting factor. You are the only reason your company does not grow faster. Mm-hmm. You, that's it. It's you. Right. Nothing then- else. But then you need to break down, why are you like that way? Right. Yep. And you need to figure out how to break through that barrier. She gave us like four books to help us break through that barrier. Yeah, we should order them all. Order them all. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it was really cool. I liked her. I liked her a lot. She was smart. Yes. The smart. Yes. Yep. Sean wants me to cut my hair like her. Mm-hmm. She's yum yum sass. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I'm going to laugh if she listens to I it. hope she listens to this. Right? Like, out of the blue, she's just 100%. like, no, I'm going to listen to their podcast. Why not? You know what? She's 38 and she's beautiful. That's true. Good for her. And she doesn't use Botox. I heard her say that. Dude. She does like... She looks great. Uh, she does something, but it's like with coldness and it helps like rejuvenate your face muscles. Mm, mm-hmm. Well, know. yeah. So um, Sam told me she wants to cut her hair into like a bob. And I was Literally, like, like before we even went on the trip. Like the day, like the day before we went on the trip, Sean, I want to cut my hair into a bob, and I was like, Yeah, I don't think that's gonna look good, like blonde. Like I don't think it's gonna look good. And then she had the haircut, and she's blonde. That Sam said she wanted. I was like, Oh yeah, yep, that would look good. You should do that. You never once said that wouldn't look good. Yeah, I one hundred percent did. I no, said, you said no. Nah, did it to me that I said it would look a lot better as a brunette or dark hair than it would as a blonde. You didn't. I said that because I said multiple times. I was like. Are you sure you would like it if I cut my hair short? And you're like, yeah, go for it. Do whatever. I still did say that. But I was like, yeah, I think it would look better as a brunette or black. I told you that. But then I saw it in blonde. I was like, oh, that does look good. You should do that. You did not say that it would look bad. You did not say that ever. I t- you you said mm-hmm. that it would look better brunette. Exactly. Or, that is not saying you wouldn't ah, like it though. Mm, you know what? It's because I was being tactful. Even though I asked you a million times. So oh, you, know you think what? this would actually look good? Turns yeah, sure, up, whatever. It would Go look good. I was just prefacing that moment. I knew that it would come to fruition that we'd find out. I was prophesizing, Sam. Yeah. But so anyway, Sean wants me to cut my hair like her now. I just want you to do that because you wanted to do that. I'm oh. here to make you happy. Okay, Sean. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. That was our weekend. Then we did the hot seat. The hot seat. The yes. hot seat was very... Okay, hold on, hold on. We can't just end it with that Lindsay looked great. She looked great. But she brought a lot of value. Yes. And I liked the personal development side of you are your limiting belief. Mm-hmm. So her like the la- one of the last things we worked on was what habits do you currently have that you cannot bring with you if you want to be the person you want to be in 10 years or in in the next year it was like the next year even and we've talked about this on the podcast i think this is probably our both of our number one but i don't know if you wrote it down using my phone as a distraction yeah yeah did you write it down yes i wrote it down bro Oh my gosh, yeah, you did. Wait, I did you am, did you write it down after I wrote it down? I cheated. Oh my god. I cheated. Wow. <laughs> Nothing's changed. That's uh, that's our number one thing. I would say Still. that's our number one. So anyhow, let's keep moving on. Yes. But so yeah, she I she was my favorite. Out of all the speakers, no offense everyone else, she was my favorite. I just like how she was like she brought it all together. Yeah. And she was also a woman. Yeah. Women like listening to women. That's true. Um, so then we did the hot seat. The hot seat. The hot seat. Uh, not for the week. Let's just start with that. I liked it. I loved it. Uh, so you get into small groups. So we got into two groups of five and one group of four. I was in the group of four. Yeah, Sean was lucky. And one person is in the hot seat. They get two minutes to talk about what their, like, issue is or limiting factor is. And then the next five minutes is everyone else in the group giving suggestions on how to fix or, like, solve this problem and pretend like that person's not there, which was actually really hard for my group because some of the things, like, we needed to ask questions in order Mm -hmm. to, like, clarify things. Yes. Yep. Um, but it was really hard to like pretend like they weren't there. Uh, I didn't think so. You didn't think so? Oh, our no. group struggled with it. Oh yeah, I was just like, da, da, da. yeah, quit talking now. Da, da, you don't exist. Da, da, da. After that, then we got five minutes to have like a discussion with them, so they could either defend themselves or be like, "I've tried this. This is why it doesn't work." Wait, hold on. Wait, what? Yeah. They were able to talk during that time. Yeah. We didn't let them do that. Oh, are you serious? We let them. We talked about them. Okay, okay, Mr. We were sick of Dan yelling at us what the instructions were. Yeah, we wanted to run our own show. We did our own hot seat. Yeah, no, the last five minutes was them being able to, like, defend themselves or... No. Yeah. No, because you know what? We didn't want that shit. 
No, it was actually really beneficial because, like, with Caroline, I brought up, when she couldn't talk, how she should either get rid of waxing or increase her prices of just waxing because that's the one thing that she doesn't profit on the most. So then the next five minutes, she was able to tell us. Wait, so it was 10 minutes a person? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, 12. 12. Okay, so we no, had... Well, he did four and four. It was supposed to be five and five, but he did four and four, so it was... 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So we did... That was... Four minutes was not enough time. That's why we did not do it that way. We did it where the first two minutes, we went over the issue, mm -hmm. or what they thought the issue was. Then we spent like eight minutes... Just grill... Just talking about... Just grill them. them. Yeah. And if something didn't fit in that time, we let them like say... Um, it wasn't that they could like re, they could just tell us if we were like off track. Oh. That was it. Yeah. No, they were supposed to like be included for the last. No. It was, so we did include them for like the last two minutes to make sure that like wh everything we said was like on track and what mm -hmm. they liked and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was supposed to be longer than that. Yeah. yeah. Well, which was good because we spent like eight minutes actually going over like the issue. Mm -hmm. And during that eight minutes, if we got off track, they're like, oh no, no it's because of this. We're like, okay, thank you. You know what I'm saying? So that way we didn't get way off track for the four minutes. We only had four minutes. Yeah, four minutes ain't enough time. It kind of it was for us. It wasn't for I us. would give I would give we five minutes. Deep. We went because deep. Because then you can keep going and like in on some of it, or like keep coming up with ideas in the next five minutes with them being a part of it. Yeah, that's true. We kind of just conglomerated it and uh, made sure that we were able to give like we actually did like twelve minutes because we had four people of like pure value. Yeah. Oh, I would, are you saying mine wasn't valuable? I'm not saying yours wasn't valuable. I'm just saying I know I ours was very valuable. Ours was. I liked that the, they could defend themselves and like because they now, were still able to defend themselves on ours for two minutes. Well, they could like, but throughout the process, if we were off track or something didn't make sense, we'd be like, "Hey, are we right?" And they're like, "Yep, you're going good." Or like, "No, it's because of this." And we're like, "Oh, that makes sense." But that's not the point. Of it. They're not even supposed to be able to say any of those things. We let them say stuff. Yeah. No. So anyways, um, the three other people in my group, I think we did a great job. So I think we did a very good way that made it work. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't care what you have to say, Sam. Okay. I don't care about I... your way. Our way was awesome. But it was I think it was very beneficial for everyone. The only thing I think that'll be better when we do it at our meetings instead is like cuz some of the stuff it dealt with like the significant other or like a business partner. <laughs> Or, like, employees in your business. So, I think what will be nice during the, like, our actual mastermind meetings is after the fact, like, you'll be able to go talk to your significant other or, like, your employees about some of the stuff that, like, people came up with. Mm-hmm. Hundy percenty. Because mm -hmm. we, I mean, after the fact, we all were just, like, let's swim and hang out and decompress from everything. Mm -hmm. Stop playing with that. Uh, okay, Sam. Yeah, I agree. We should have uh, decompressed. So the hot seat was really fun. I learned what I needed to focus on. Thank you, group. Which is completely different than he's been saying for the past couple of months. Different on paper. Yes. It's in my head. Yes. Just not. You've. Oh, whatever. Okay. See ya. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. Glad we did it. I'm excited for more masterminds. Yeah, agreed. Um, if you're interested in joining the mastermind, let me know. Us know? Let us know. Mm -hmm. I think I want to put uh, like an anonymous suggestion thing on our website because I'm curious what things people want to see from us through blogs and the podcast. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Do it. Let's do it. Cool. Done deal. Okay. Well, follow us on tutorsoflife.com. Follow us on Tutors of Life on Instagram and Facebook. And TikTok. TikTok. And YouTube. YouTube. Tutors of Life for everything. Okay. Bye. See ya.